Hello, dear viewers, and thank you for joining me on another week of This Week in Canada. My name is Roberto Wakerel Cruz, and welcome to the very first post Bill C 10 episode. Well, not quite. We're going to get into it a little bit more. But because Bill C 10 has already passed in the House, as you're already likely aware if you're a fan of this show, it is very important that you go to the links below, sign up for the email list, give us a subscription, and give us a like so that you can keep in touch with everything that the post millennial is doing on the day to day. We don't know exactly what this means because the bill was written kind of vaguely. So make sure you give it a like, subscribe, all that. Now let's get into the fun stuff Bill C10. Uh, on Monday night, I went to bed thinking that I'd wake up in the free ish Canada that I live in. But it turns out, no, I didn't even know it was happening. I somehow missed it. I don't know if I missed it because it passed at 1.30 a.m. Bill C-10 has passed in the House. Still has to go to the Senate where uh, senators have said that there is a, quote, 0% chance that the bill will pass before the summer break. So we're going to have to hold our breaths and just see what happens with this bill. If you want to know more about that, we have pretty specific episodes of this show and I believe other shows that get into more detail. Look it up. Pretty interesting stuff. And if you want to know how your MP voted, you can go. We'll put the link below of the yay or nay votes. Basically, if you are a conservative supporter, uh, your party voted nay. And if you're a supporter of any other party, the Bloc, the Greens, the NDP, and of course the Liberals, uh, they voted yay to this bill. And why is that? Well, that's because they're all the same. That's what Pierre Polyev said in a very, uh, just a very fun moment for Pierre Polyev. We like Pierre Polyev on the show. He uh, was a guest. But look at his face in this clip where he owns the MP for Kingston. Let's roll the clip. But why is every, virtually every MP in here except the Conservatives supporting this? Have they suddenly decided to go along with this? grand plan that the member is suggesting through his borderline conspiracy theories? Well, member for Carlton. Why do the, the Bloc, the NDP and the Liberals all support the bill? It's simple. They're all the same. <laughs> <laughs> They're all the same. They all believe, they all believe in putting the state above the citizen. That's the core of their ideology. They believe in worshiping at the altar of the state, that big government should decide and that the people should just follow. God, what a Chad Pierre Polyev is, eh? And he's having fun. He's laughing it up. And he's right. All these other parties believe in government first and the people second. This is something that's been just talked about for ages, but it's true. The liberals, the NDP, the bloc, and the Greens, I guess if they're even a real party, all believe that the government should has full control over what you do and what content you should be watching and what stories are Canadian, what stories aren't Canadian. But boy, do I have more fun for you because if you did not like Bill C-10, you are going to hate, hate Bill C-36. And this is the new bill that was uh, unveiled, I believe, yesterday, if you're watching this today. Uh, it's called Bill C-36, an act to amend the criminal code. We'll put it up on the screen here. And this bill is really the bill that people were fearing in Bill C-10. Bill C-10 is something that you should be worried about, but Bill C-36 is the one that kind of crystallizes that kind of internet control via government that people were really afraid of in C-10. And it's going to get confusing. I might say 10 for 36, but I'll just call it the censorship bill, the new censorship bill. So what does this new censorship bill do? Isn't it crazy that we have an old censorship bill and a new censorship bill? I mean, come on. It's getting a little ridiculous, Canada. It's actually really starting to break my heart. But what does this new censorship bill do? Uh, well, it puts it that bloggers, publishers, and anyone that's on Facebook and Twitter uh, will be eligible for house arrest or large fines of up to $70,000. And this bill aims to create, quote, a safe and inclusive online environment, an environment that protects everyone. You can never come up with a perfect piece of legislation, said uh, Stephen Gibo, but says that we have to use as many tools as possible to deal with this problem. There is no silver bullet to deal with this issue. And this, of course, is talking about internet hatred and radicalization which this kind of lines up with a commitment taken by a lot of global economies and uh, global powerhouses in the form of the Christchurch call, which if you 
don't remember, this was kind of like a Paris Agreement kind of environment thing, but for online hate, where it, it, there's no actual threshold that you have to meet. Uh, there's targets, but there's no real penalty for if you don't do it. And this was the Christchurch call. This was by PM Jacinda Ardern of uh, New Zealand. And, of course, after the horrible, horrible tragedy in Christchurch where 49 uh, Muslim worshippers were killed in two separate mosques, uh, she decided to create this pledge with a bunch of other world leaders that they were going to tackle online hatred. This, of course, because uh, the shooter, who I can't remember his name, but I wouldn't say it anyway, uh, was found to go on like 4chan and stuff a lot. Okay. Uh, fair enough, I guess. But the bill reads, it is a discriminatory practice to communicate or cause uh, to be communicated hate speech by means of the internet or other means of telecommunications in a context in which the hate speech is likely to foment detestation or vilification of an individual or group of individuals on the basis of a prohibited ground of discrimination. So, what does that exactly mean? Well, as David Lametti put it, they're not going to just, look, it's not going to be like just getting rid of anger on the internet, but it's going to be specific forms of hatred and specific forms of uh, uh, like targeted harassment kind of thing. Of course, Canada already has hate speech laws. We've had those since the 70s. It's in the criminal code. But these bills now will make it so that you can be under house arrest or face $70,000 fines. That's pretty severe. And the thing that really concerns me is like, look, do I want more hate on the internet? No, I think there's enough. I would like there to be less even. But why is the government deciding what is and isn't hate? Pretty spooky. So this is just the first day of the story. This is brand new. This is coming out. You guys are just getting the inside scoop now. This is like breaking news almost. Not really. But I can tell you there's going to be an episode down the road that is going to be about this bill, and we're going to, we're going to keep you updated on that. Our next topic is a little bit lighter, and it's lighter not because necessarily the, the content in it is lighter. It's still about racism and sexism. Everything is, I guess. But it's about our friend Jody Wilson-Raybould, the independent MP for Vancouver Granville, uh, because she had something done to her that she said was racist and sexist. What was this? What could have happened to her that was racist and sexist? And I'm not inserting my opinion in here yet because I want you to be the judge. I want you to tell me if you think so in the comments below, of course. Well, the Minister of Indigenous Affairs texted her at 4 a.m. Weird, maybe after a few drinks. This, we'll put it up on the screen here. So there, there you see it. This is the text here. And it simply just reads, pension? Question mark. And this text was from Carolyn Bennett, who, as I just explained, was the Minister of uh, Indigenous Affairs, texting Jody wilson Raybould pension on a tweet where she is uh, calling out Justin Trudeau on doing what's right for the Native Indigenous communities and making sure that they have access to water and just food and stuff like that. I think, I think they're okay for food, I would think. But water, seriously, is the big one. It's more important than food, to be honest. And so what does this mean? Because this could be a little bit confusing to really figure out. Well, if you aren't aware, after six years of serving in the House as an MP, you get a pretty nice pension. It's a pretty huge pension. $150,000, which is way more money than I'm ever going to make in my life. I mean, I don't even have... A degree. So $150,000, that's a lot of money. That's way more than they deserve. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're already set. Their careers are already made for them after that. $150,000? That's like the 1% of Canada. Anyway, after six years, you get this pension. And it turns out Justin Trudeau was elected in 2015. I know it feels like it's been forever. But it's only been six years, and the amount of damage he's done is like so beyond the pale. I was, th I was just thinking today. I was like, I can't wait to move. 2015, Justin Trudeau gets elected. That means the class that he got elected with and all his ministers and everything, all the people that got in, that big red wave that took out Harper, they're all waiting to get their pensions because it's in October. They've just got to make it. So when Jody Wilson-Raybould says uh, she doesn't want an election, that's Carolyn Bennett's cue mentally for her to go, oh, hmm, look at you. you. You don't want an election, eh? Is it because you're riding has a neck-and-neck neck race. Let's put the poll up on the screen of Vancouver-Granville. Uh, and this is the most recent figures for the area. 
So, as you can see there on the screen, Jody Wilson-Raybould has a very, very slight lead, only a two-point lead over the Liberal candidate, who is at 31%, with the CPC at 17%, the NDP at 13 the Green at 3.9%, and the Block, no, not the Block, sorry, the Block's at zero, of course, the PPC at just under 1%. So, Carolyn Bennett goes, oh, hmm, that's pretty interesting. You don't want an election considering you might not get your pension. To which Jody Wilson-Raybould uh, responds, well, she doesn't respond. She responds on Twitter and says, this is a racist and misogynist text from Carolyn Bennett because her words are reflecting the notion that indigenous peoples are lazy and only want money. What? Shows disregard, disdain, and disrespect for indigenous peoples as in our history. Conveys a strong indigenous woman as a bad indigenous woman. I think, okay, so I kind of in interjected my opinion there a little bit. I didn't mean to. But I, okay, it, what do you think about this? Please let me know because it is of my opinion that this is more of just a kind of cheap shot, like kind of like, Haha, you want your pension, you you know, loser. It's probably just that. It doesn't see, come off as a uh, Carolyn Bennett saying, hey, you lazy, you know, res rat, what are you doing? We're trying to get a pension? What are you, you, what are you too busy like huffing gas and want a pension? That doesn't seem like what he's saying, what she's saying at all. Anyway, this led to her apologizing. Carolyn Bennett, just hours later, goes earlier. I offered my apologies directly to the MP for Vancouver Granville. I let interpersonal dynamics get the better of me and sent an insensitive and inappropriate comment, which I deeply regret and shouldn't have done. Uh, well, you know why you shouldn't have done it, Carolyn? It's because it was at four in the morning. No good texts go out at four in the morning. No good texts. Not a single good text goes out at four in the morning. Jody Wilson-Raybould, I think, saw it, if I'm going to be cynical, as a as a opportunity for her to dunk on the liberals because just the stars aligned and this just happened to be the, indig the minister of indigenous affairs. Like, could there be a bigger dunk besides the prime minister himself on who's sending her this message? But yeah, what was Caroline Bennett thinking? I really don't know. I mean, it's so stupid to really just say that to an indigenous person. And look, you might be wondering why I'm not wearing a hat today. It's because I, well, I was running around the house and I put on my hat and it was my Cleveland Indians hat. And I was like, ah, I can't wear this anymore. So even I have the sense to not wear the Cleveland Indians hat. Meanwhile, Carolyn Bennett <laughs> sent, sending 4 a.m. text messages to a native woman why is Caroline Bennett also the, the, the Minister of Indigenous Affairs? Was there not a indigenous person that's culpable or available and that would be able to take care of that problem? If only there was an indigenous woman that could have taken over that position for Justin Trudeau. Wow, that's just nonsense. Surely she couldn't be sitting in Vancouver Granville if only she hadn't been kicked out. Anyway, I think that's pretty much it for today. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. So let me know what you thought of the episode. Uh, I'm sure you have plenty of nice things to say. Uh, give us a like. Give us a subscribe. Give us a one-time donation and join the mailing list. I'm, I'm starting to get a little paranoid because this Bill C-10 and Bill C-36 stuff seems like it's happening all pretty fast. It doesn't seem like I'd be able to get a uh, refugee kind of license or whatever you need to get go to the U.S. or Mexico. So... Make sure you sign up. Make sure you leave a like. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you put that bell notification button on. Make sure you buy some merch. For the love of God, buy some merch. And I'll see you next week. My name's Roberto. Bye-bye.